I don't know about you, but these subscriptions are gonna kill me. I, every time I turn around, I have a new one. It's something I've subscribed to for 20 bucks a month, $17 a month. I think I have a price point that I'm willing to pull the trigger on anything. Uh, maybe I have a problem, but look, it's not me, it's them. And I think today we feed this problem to the AI monster to see if we can solve it. Let's jump in. So I sat down with this cool little thing and I decided, oh, what I'll do is I'll create a little game so that I can keep track of the subscriptions I have and actually use them. And I thought I'd make a little spinner and I'd spin the wheel and whichever one it landed on, I'd build a little app with that API, you know, as you would. Okay, that sounded like a neat idea until while I was building that, actually, I got a notification that essentially said, subscription, thanks a lot for the money, 20 bucks a month. Let's dive in and take a look at what it's like to try to solve the curiosity of subscriptions. What is this, the subscription secret service discovery challenge? Yeah, that's what it is. Let's dive in. So the story starts in Gmail. I had this idea that maybe I could find out what I'm subscribed to by just looking at my email because a lot of the things that I subscribe to seemingly send me emails. If I just search my email here with subscription, you'll see this big long list of subscriptions. It also pulls in a whole bunch of newsletters and cold outreach things and a bunch of things that I really don't need to look at. I'm trying to find subscriptions that I'm paying for. So the next one very simply is the Gmail subscription query, but essentially I'm saying I want email between these dates. I'm trying to get a very top of the funnel kind of concept, catch as many as I possibly can. And then you have to be in this kind of bucket. So this is decidedly not a great filter, but that's kind of the whole point is you cannot get to a great filter in Gmail that solves this question. It, you just cannot. And so let's copy this and go run that. And this gets us a much better version. It's not perfect, but you can see there's a lot more of these kind of PDFs and PDFs are kind of the representation of someone sending an attachment that is usually a receipt. And that's a pretty good indicator that there was some money that changed hands in these cases. So, okay, so this was a better place to go, but still really not perfect. Okay, so what's next? What did I try next? So there's deep research that we can use from both a cloud environment, Anthropic and Open AI, so I can select deep research and in deep research, I can connect my Gmail here. Claude itself, I've come in and I've attached my Gmail here. And so it is going to do the same thing. And then in, in this case, I provided the same prompt. It's what I needed. It's what I was trying to look for. So I'm looking for things that are things I'm paying for that are actual subscriptions that are no longer, that weren't canceled. So I don't want to find a bunch of things that I used to subscribe to and have since canceled, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And at the bottom of both of these, you'll notice that I'm actually sending in that Gmail query uh, that we sent in before. At the very least, they're starting theoretically with the same top of funnel set of subscriptions or emails at this point point that I was dealing with. And I ended up with pretty good results down here. There are a lot of reasons to really like what Deep Research is doing. If you are a subscriber to Anthropic or to OpenAI, I would say give this a shot. This is a very, very good starting point, but it is by no stretch the whole story. So, okay, let's move on to the next thing that I looked at. Okay, so I, I 
have subscribed to an email service or an email program called Shortwave. So they're using AI just like anything else. So what I did is I came in here and I created a query that was the same query that I just put into the others. I have this whole big prompt at the top that's saying, here's with this provided Gmail query, please go do all of this stuff. And it reads through and it looks at everything and figures out and breaks it down quite nicely. I definitely would say they are an aspect of the, the answer as well. So they're not nearly as big as the story that we're getting out of the deep research projects that we're using MCP to get to my Gmail. Whew. Okay. So that's a lot. Let's get into some real depth here. Google has something called called app script. And this is at scripts.google.com. You can then write scripts specifically for some of their internal applications or, you know, the web-based applications that you're used to using. Any of their apps have this scripting mechanism. But the idea is up here, you would be able to pick one of the functions that's inside of this file that we're in and hit run or debug and then watch the execution log as it flows by. So that's one of the main cornerstones of how I solved I definitely did not solve this problem, how I started to solve this problem. And I understand we're now so deep in the weeds. We're going to go in one step deeper. So hang on for the ride. We're about to bring Claude code into this because both it went severely deeper, but also made everything infinitely easier. So, okay, let's dive into that. Okay. All right. Real simple. At this point, we're in Claude code, which is where I started. I, I after discovering all of those things and realizing, okay, there's a solution here that should be very easy for me to manipulate these emails. Let me drop down to Claude code, tell it about the things I've found, and we'll go from there. Basically, you saw those scripts that were running or could be run in the browser, those app scripts. Claude can run those as well from a command line interface. I want you to see what happened underneath all of this was I basically went to Gmail, got a very broad top of funnel query and said, give me as, any, as many emails as you can imagine that might be in this problem set. A lot of false positives. So there's a lot of things that are saying, hey me, hey me, hey me, that we're going to need to filter out. That's what's going on in this project here. First, we need the broadest set without bringing in years of just a whole bunch of junk and spam and everything else. So that came down as these raw candidates. Inside of each one of these is all of the emails that fit some version of kind of generic possible subscription. Maybe it only has the word subscription in it or something else. I know a lot of y'all at this point are going, what the hell are we doing here? Hang on just for a second because we're getting very close to me saying, and I waved my hands and some magic happened. Basically, I started interacting with Claude at this point saying, great, we've created these text candidates. What I really really want you to do is go through these text candidates and put the ones that feel like real subscriptions or possible, what I called candidates for subscriptions. So these are subscription candidates, a much smaller list from this month. How did I do that? Well, I asked Claude, didn't write anything, asked Claude to write a program that would take each one of those emails one at a time and send it to an LLM. And in this case, I used a uh, 4 mini, which is a very cheap model. And one email at a time, send it over to OpenAI, ask for it to fill in some information and give us some JSON back. But just so you see, this is where the intelligence came in. Using Claude code, I could look at these emails and say, write something for this. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. I'll mention it here. Hopefully I'll mention it in a second as well. This is where I start interacting with Claude as an LLM at the command line. So right here in Claude code, I am starting to ask it questions of the files that are sitting in the folder it's aware of. So I've opened it, of course, in that project and I can say, hey, go look at this email. Tell me what you think of it. And in fact, that's very much like sending it off, writing a script and sending it to an LLM and getting it back. So in reality, I may have been able to ask Claude code to do all of this work without writing anything. I could have said, go through each one of these emails and do X, Y, Z and write us a, a kind of a JSON output. And that really would have been a very reasonable way to do this. And I'm kind of interested in trying that at some point, because I think that's a real unlock that Claude is offering us is the ability to just be a scriptable, programmable, basically LLM at the command line. And I could say, oh, when you're done with each one of these, put the result into another folder structured as JSON. I need these pieces of information in it. Okay. In any case, I wrote a set of scripts that did that for us. And we end up with a bunch of summarized stuff. So where did we go with that? Remember this guy? Yeah, we're going. We're getting there. I know. I know. Hang on just a minute because I'm really starting to wave my hands here. Now we're out of the, how was any of this done? I just wanted you to see all of this was done working with Claude Code. Claude Code is a great partner in doing this kind of thing. 
and actually working with it in a way that makes it an LLM rather than just a coding partner is really valuable. There were multiple times that I said, in a sub thread, I want you to go look at all of these files and give me some kind of aggregate of what you think the different vendors are. And it would run off and do that and work through 20 different files, give me some result back. In the meantime, I was telling it in another sub thread, I want you to write a program that's gonna be doing this X, Y, Z, consuming some information. And so really working with it as a partner where it can do multiple things at once. And that's really a fascinating way to work with this thing. All right. Now let's get back to a little bit of the hand wave. Okay, so again, at the end, I just said, hey, Claude, can you possibly build me a dashboard so that I can keep track of the changes that we're making as we're making them so that I can see whether or not it feels like we're honing in on the answer or if things are being destructive as we change the prompts. And a lot of this is prompt driven, of course. So there was a couple times that I did drop in on prompts and really work with Claude and say, you're saying this, I wanna say that, in fact, Oh, hang on just a second. I'll show you one more. This is going to get nerdy again. I apologize, but I'll just show you one more thing. If I look at the usage that I've had uh, today, I spent 47 cents. Finally, I've been working on this for a couple days and there were several million input tokens during these days as well. You can see at this point, I'm up to 20 million tokens. So a lot of use here because I'm going through a classifier for each one of those emails. And let me tell you with 20 million tokens, that is a lot of runs. There was a lot of work going on in here. Okay, okay, we're hand waving. So here we are. This is the outcome of everything. This was the dashboard that was built from it. Seemingly 36 active subscriptions, you know, $3,600 a year. Here's my basic break breakdown. If we go down, you'll see what I ended up with is a great big old list of the different subscriptions that I have and what categories they're in. All right, so that's really useful. Any given time, I can just take a look at one set of the subscriptions and say, here's all the AI subscriptions. And this is nowhere near the all, but it's the 14 that I could find reliably out of that information. And some of them are misses anyway. So it's a little surprising, but it's still a lot better than it was. All right. My gosh, this guy, right? We're going back to this guy? We gotta do that now, let's go. All right, real quick, let's get back to some coding here. We're gonna clear Claude, and I'm gonna give him reference to that file that we just created. Hey Claude, here's what I want. I wanna build a cool application. It's a one page, single page application. We don't need any routing or anything else, but what I want is something really attractive and cool up top. All right, let's see what happens when Claude cooks with that. Excellent, all right. Says it's done, let's take a look. Okay, what do we have here? Let's spin her up. Speech to text streaming. Okay. And what ideas might they generate out of speech to text and streaming? Knowledge narrator. Knowledge narrator is a personal AI tutor that not only finds the most relevant, up to date information on any topic via a web search, but then personalizes the delivery with a voice identical to your favorite educators or historical figures. By combining these technologies, users experience truly bespoke learning sessions that feel as though they're being taught directly by those they admire. <laughs> okay, I mean, we might get in a little bit of trouble, uh, but yeah, Storytime Explorer transforms bedtime by utilizing web searches to find culturally diverse stories and folklore than delivering these tales in the voices of beloved characters or family members via voice cloning. Okay, so these are great ideas. So they're now we've gone through our email, we found everything that we've got from subscriptions. We can now roll ideas and just have some fun to use these APIs or to ditch them. All right, let's wrap this one up. Okay, I hope that one wasn't too painful for you. There was a lot in there and I have a feeling I probably went pretty quickly on a couple of those parts. Feel free to drop me a comment if, uh, if you're looking for a particular part or some information about what I did in a certain space. Like I said, it was not perfect by any stretch, but it really does get a few steps forward from just looking at Gmail and hoping that what you're looking at is the whole list, which I guarantee you, I didn't find anything that came close to the whole list. So, all right. If you like this kind of stuff, please subscribe. It helps the channel immensely. And I am going to do some more builds, maybe not quite so frantic. I didn't expect this one to be this frantic. Hopefully the next one will be just fun. I ha have a feeling the next one will just be fun. If you want to see that one, subscribe now. Otherwise, either way, thanks for being here and I'll see you in the next one.